uh, introduce to you Diane Bas Babsky, General Assembly Representative of the, of the United States of America, and Carmela Kaudrek uh, of the Office of the National Coordination of Health Information Technology to present an update on the U.S. Uh, journey with SNOMED City. Good. All right, thank you. Um, I don't know if you can see up here, but there's like a little breeze and I'm gonna talk in between my teeth chattering, so bear with me. <laughs> anyway, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Diane Babsky. I am from the US National Library of Medicine and it's really great to see you all here in Atlanta, so welcome. All right, I'm gonna figure this out. There we go. Um, the National Library of Medicine is the world's largest biomedical library. It's a respected research hub, and it's one of the 27 institutes at the National Institutes of Health. So I'm going to let you enjoy the voice of our previous director, Dr. Patricia Flatley Brennan. She just retired on uh, September 30th, but she did a great intro, and I think this really gives you the historical background. National Library of Medicine, we provide trusted information to scientists, to society, and to people living every day with healthcare challenges. For over 200 years, the National Library of Medicine has been a partner in biological discovery, clinical care decision making, and healthcare choices in everyday living. We began humbly as a small collection of books in the 1800s and now have grown to massive genomic data banks accessible worldwide every day by millions of people. Okay. And that worked. So um, we do have a long, rich history, and we also have a rich history of experience working with health data standards. So this is a brief overview of our history and the standards environment. So I'm gonna start on the left-hand side with our medical subject headings, we call MESH, which dates back to the 1960s when we recognized the need for a controlled vocabulary to index the growing amount of biomedical literature. Next, we go on to the Unified Medical Language System that we all call the UMLS, which was created in the 1980s and it integrates and uh, distributes key tech, uh, terminologies, classifications, and coding standards along with tooling. In the early 90s, we be began to incorporate long codes into the UMLS. Later in the 90s, we started offering SNOMED, CT is a component of the UMLS. Soon thereafter, NLM was designated as the central coordinating body for clinical terminology standards within the Department of Health and Human Services. And that's our, our, our two parents up in our uh, organizational structure. The development of RxNorm began soon thereafter in the 2000s. The first issue was launched in 2005. And this was in response to the need for a standardized system for clinical drug information. Later that decade, we see the inclusion of vocabulary standards such as LOINC, RxNorm, and SNOMED CT and the rules speci specifying US certification toward uh, for electronic health information systems. And the arrow stops there, but it continues on as we look toward our future and our 200th anniversary in 2036, which is only 12 short years away. We'll continue to innovate and develop new ways to contribute to the health data standards environment. And uh, health data standards are also a, a critical component and underpinning of our NLM strategic plan that runs from 2017 to 27. And standards are not just for EHR. So now I'm going to channel a little bit of Don's buzz over here. And uh, <laughs> we are investigating uh, gener generative AI research with the aim of advancing the development of biomedical large language models. We already have um, a prototype called Trial GPT 
which matches patients from their EHRs and patient notes with appropriate clinical trials. So we're trying to think about how can we leverage Gen AI to develop personal assistant bots? And I don't like calling them that, so we're gonna come up with something kitschy, I promise. Really to help people navigate through the mass quantities of NLM data and NIH data. Over 95% of our web traffic comes in through web search engines. Most people don't know that they're in an NLM product. They don't even know what product they're in. So it kind of doesn't matter. But we want to make sure that they're getting good quality health information from however they access us. So we want to train bots to interpret user queries, understand context, and deliver personalized summaries and insights from our trusted health information resources. And all of this has truly been made more feasible with well-structured, semantically linked um, data based on standards. All right, so moving on, how is NLM involved with SNOMED CT? We are the charter member on behalf of the United States. We are the US National Release Center, which means we distribute the SNOMED CT products such as the international edition and its subsets. We also author and maintain the US edition and create the SNOMED to ICD-10 CM map. We are very happy users of the managed services to produce the US edition which is the extension combined with the international edition. We make SNOMED CT products available to the public for free through the UMLS, the Unified Medical Language System. Anyone can access SNOMED CT products if they sign up with a free license um, that also has the SNOMED affiliate license embedded in it as well. All right, so now I'm gonna try to describe how it all comes together here the secret sauce. So on the left hand side is everything that NLM as the US coordinator were responsible for developing, promoting, disseminating the standards, especially to our the middle column there, our federal partners that are under the Health and Human Services parent that I talked about a few minutes ago. And then these agencies then implement or legislate the use of health data standards in the public health care systems that impact the end users all the way on the right hand side and stakeholders that are noted there, including patients. So these efforts all serve the greater purpose to promote better health through our public services. And now it is not possible without the people. So even though we're gonna put you know, an emphasis on Gen AI, we still need the humans in the mix. Um, so let me go ahead and introduce, I'm gonna ask them to participate this time again and raise your hand when I call you out. Uh, this is our team, our SNOMED team. So I'm gonna start in the top left corner, John Schneider, there he is, is the US SNOMED CT author. Ken Wafong is the SNOMED mapping team lead. Uh, me in the middle, I'm the GA rep, and I'm going to go down to the bottom now for, uh, on the left-hand side is Nick McGraw. And Nick is the SNOMED CT coordinator and release manager. Patrick McLaughlin, bottom right, he's over there. He is a member forum representative and is part of the terminology release advisory group. And finally, Olivier Bodenreiter, upper top right corner. Olivier, I'm going to ask you to stand. <laughs> Work your bones. <laughs> anyway, Olivier is retiring at the end of this year, so it may be his last meeting. And um, Olivia, you have made such an impact on health data standards and especially working with SNOMED. So thank you. We appreciate all of your work. But wait, there's more. I have a plug <laughs> to um, encourage you to go and visit our booth. So since this is in the US, we really did try to get many of our federal partners in from CDC, FDA, ONC. And um, I hope you will take a moment to go up and talk to people, hear about some of the products going on and, um, and, and see what's new and interesting. 
And with that, I will go ahead and pass the mic on to Carmela. Thanks, Diane. Good morning, everybody. My name is Camilla Couder, and I work at a sister office to uh, NLM, um, and I'm in the terminology content branch. That sits within the standards division, and that's part of. Oh, I have to advance this. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Um, so that is part of the Office of the National Coordinator for Health IT, ONC. In my spare time, I also serve as a co-chair on the HL7 Terminology Infrastructure Work Group. And I'm really excited to be here today to talk with you about how ONC supports the use of SNOMED CT in US implementations of health IT. So today I'll be covering a brief overview about ONC, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about United States core data for interoperability, fondly known as USCDI, how it incorporates SNOMED CT, and then a little bit about ONC's regulations. Uh, Diane mentioned um, regulations briefly, and then how we relate with SNOMED CT. All right, so into the overview. So ONC was founded by a presidential executive order in 2004. Five years later, it was finally established. Uh, takes time sometimes to get these things to happen. But the key point on this slide is that um, ONC is charged with formulating the federal government's health IT strategy to advance national goals for better and safer health care through an interoperable nationwide health IT infrastructure. So when we talk about, um, like I heard some of the earlier talks, we were talking about SNOMED and, and uh, how it's a small and mighty organization. Well, ONC is also very small. We're, we're within um, the huge Department of Health and Human Services, but ONC has under 200 people to cover policy, operations, and standards for health IT. It's a great organization though. <laughs> All right, so our focus areas. We focus on standards, certification, and exchange, and we coordinate across the federal level, state, and local agencies. So that's in our name, coordination. Everything we do at ONC is in fulfillment of our mission and vision. And our mission is to create systemic improvements in health and care through the access, exchange, and use of data. Longer term, our vision is better health enabled by data. So I, I believe you're starting to see the connection. So over on the right slide, right part of the slide, we have our major priorities. And SNOMED CT is a key part of the first priority that you see, building the digital foundation. And data standards are a key component of that priority. <coughs> the other two priorities are equally important uh, in making interoperability easy and to ensure proper use of digital information and tools. I'm going to pivot now and talk about a standard that ONC curates, which is the US CDI, United States Core Data for Interoperability. As you can see on the slide, um, US CDI is a data set. It's a core data set, and it sets a baseline of data for health IT interoperability. So it's the low bar. Um, and we change it over time via a very public process that is predictable. So why does USCDI matter so much in the United States? Well, we reference USCDI and regulation. So there is currently in force the ONC Cures Act final rule. And in that rule, there's, if you ever were to read it, it would probably take days, it's thousands of pages long, 
but there are certification criteria in there. And this slide lists a few of those certification criteria that reference USCDI. And what that, when I say certification criteria, I mean those health IT modules that participate in ONC's voluntary certification program. So if a health IT module is certified by ONC, they must exchange the USCDI version one data elements and they must exchange them as defined. And in some cases that says you must use SNOMED CT. It doesn't mean that um, any one implementation actually takes advantage of those features, but the health IT that they use must supply those features. So it's a little bit of a nuance there. We count on other agencies maybe for the enforcement of, uh, for say quality reporting or for reimbursement even, they, they must actually exchange that data. So one of the um, key criteria is the um, making EHR data available via an API, and that would be a fire API and uh, certified health IT has to align with the HL7 fire US core, which sets the baseline IG for all US realm um, implementation guides at HL7, and they must support the data elements that are in US CDI version one. Now that was published in 2020. And the same is true for the other criteria we list here, um, like transitions of care. I don't have time to go into what the certification program involves, but I'm gonna put a plug in for our booths on Thursday and Friday, I'll be at the uh, ONC booth, so please stop by. And then the final point on this slide is that we recently published a, what we call a proposed rule. So it's been out for public comment. It's the um, Health Data Technology Interoperability One proposed rule. And in that, we're proposing that we um, jump over version USCDI version two and go to USCDI version three. So that would mean that certified health IT modules would have to exchange all the data elements in USCDI version three um, according to the standards. So this slide is showing you the progression of USCDI over time. So we currently have, um, we just published version four, but the important thing here is to see that we have um, a, an open process, it's predictable, over time, we add data elements and we focus on different priorities that ONC has at the time. Um, I know it's a little hard to read this slide, but um, let's see, for USCDI version two, we were very focused on advancing health equity. So we added sexual orientation and gender identity um, and also social determinants of health data elements, very promoting those. USCDI version three, which we published in 2022, we added data elements related to public health, reducing disparities and equity. That's the version that we um, are proposing in the rule that we just put out for proposal. USCDI version four, we just published in July of 2023, and we added data elements, uh, some key ones for health status assessments, uh, another highlight are some related to goals and preferences, patient expressed or person expressed goals and preferences, and also medication adherence. So what I did on this slide is I took USCDI version four. So this is kind of a crazy list of, a, it's 116 data elements, and they're organized into class, what we call data classes. The ones that I have highlighted are the ones that have declared SNOMED CT is an, what we call an applicable vocabulary standard. And that uh, label or that relationship type is, uh, was de derived back in uh, 2020. So it's actually a pretty high percentage of all the data elements that we're saying, when you exchange these, you must exchange them using a SNOMED CT code. And some of you with good eyesight might see some other data elements up there that have 
the opportunity to be exchanged with SNOMED CT as well. And uh, this is something we're continuing to explore and we work with the implementation community to, uh, to get this to happen. So one thing I just wanna bring up, and this is something that um, causes confusion over time is these data classes are just a way for us to organize these elements. So we don't have a flat list of 116 things. Um, it's not meant to convey that they must be implemented, say, in a patient demographic workflow or either for collection or for display. It's just a way for us to organize them in what we feel is logical. We get a lot of comments on that too. So I thought this diagram might resonate with some of the folks here and I took some liberties with the notation but um, I decided to take one of the data elements that was on that list, and it is substance drug class. And substance drug class has a data class of allergies and intolerances. So that's where we placed it. That's its parent, kind of. <laughs> and that it's also qualified by an applic applicable vocabulary standard of SNOMED CT US edition. So if we, we can think of these data elements ha as having different um, parameters or attributes. That's how I think about them anyways. So now I'm gonna talk about the US CDI timeline. So this shows you the cyclical nature of the US CDI timeline. If we start at the top of the circle, um, we start off the year by publishing a draft. So this is what we are going to propose to either add to USCDI or maybe we're gonna propose some revisions. And the revisions are typically things like clarifying a definition, we might add some examples. In some cases we add a definition, we do not have definition. Now I'm talking about text, textual definitions. Um, they're probably, they probably could be considered primitives. There's, there's no real relationships for these data elements. Um, but we don't change the meaning of anything we've already added to USCDI. And so what we do is we publish this draft, we give the public 60 days to enter comments. Um, we have meetings with the submitters of the comments, we have internal meetings, external meetings. And then what we do is in July of each year, we then publish a final version of USCDI and that's a referenceable standard. If you remember, I talked about referencing USCDI versions in our rules. So then that can become in regulation. And it's not until we publish the final that that can happen. At the same time, so we're at the bottom of the circle now, we open up a comment period for the next draft that's coming along. So we just closed our public comment period for USCDI version five and we uh, received about 400 comments on data elements that had been submitted previously. And we got about 62 um, suggestions for new data elements. Some of them turned out to be duplicates of previous submissions, but you know, sometimes the way people name things, it comes out a little different. So now we're synthesizing all that and we're going to publish draft USCDI version five in January. So now I'm going to talk quickly about a relatively new program we have called USCDI Plus. And USCDI Plus goes beyond that core baseline set that is USCDI. And we work with uh, federal partners to address program and use case specific needs. So the, the we're calling them domains. And what we have so far is quality, public health, cancer, maternal health, behavioral health, and real world data. Now those domains by themselves are massive and huge. So um, we're working very hard with our partners to uh, come up with data sets that address data standards for those domains. So I'll talk a little bit about, again, just to cement SNOMED CT and regulation. First list that you see, five data elements, are those ones that are currently required in regulation to be exchanged with SNOMED CT. 
So that's from USCDI version one. The second list that we see, uh, the data elements that are proposed to be required in that rule, proposed rule I mentioned, HTI-1, and um, that added nine more data elements. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, that doesn't look like 21 that I talked about that I highlighted on the other screen, and it's not. And that's because it's USCDI version three. Um, the proposed rule went out before USCDI version four was finalized, so we could not reference USCDI version four. This is just a little bit of information for you about the HTI-1 proposed rule, and the link is there for you to follow. Uh, but basically, we're um, working to achieve the goals of the Biden-Harris administration, um, you know, preparing for the next pandemic. Hopefully, that doesn't come, but let's be prepared if it does and um, advancing racial equity and support for underserved communities and um, just moving, thing, moving the needle forward for health interoperability. So I've provided some links for you that if you have the slide deck, so you can go find out more about ONC, um, also USCDI, and what you'll see on the USCDI web pages is the, the link to the, to the actual standard is to a PDF document. The other tabs that you'll see are data elements that have been submitted, and you can see the evaluation that we did on those. And then there's information about USCDI Plus, and then a link to the rule again. So thank you very much. Uh, my e email address is on here in case you'd like to reach out. I'll be here the rest of the week. And one more plug for our booth on Thursday and Friday. Thank you.